Hey everyone, this is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. I'm so excited that you're joining me for this review of the SLR Magic Anamorphic Lenses. You know, traditionally, I think anamorphic shooting has been for the select few, the few filmmakers who were able to afford renting anamorphic lenses and the cameras that were able to shoot with these lenses. With the Panasonic GH5, you have a rather inexpensive mirrorless camera that supports anamorphic shooting. And with firmware 2.0, it's not only 4K anamorphic at up to 60 frames per second, but 6K anamorphic up to 30 frames in 10 bit. And now all of a sudden, between that camera and the SLR Magic anamorphic lenses, you have a match made in heaven for a very inexpensive price considering the competition. So what's the big deal with anamorphic? Most sensors are 16 by 9, and what people do is they shoot their 16 by 9 image, and then in post, they might add black bars along the top and bottom to make their shots look more filmic to give a fake 2.35 aspect ratio. When you take an anamorphic lens and use it on a 16 by 9 sensor, you're able to capture more of the width of the sensor. And when you take that square image and you de squeeze it in post, you see a true cinemascope image that is beautifully widescreen without losing any of the vertical information. And that's where these two times anamorphic lenses from SLR Magic really shine. And if you want a really good in-depth look at what that footage looks like, check out my video called Buddha Box because the entire video was shot with the GH5 and the SLR Magic 35 millimeter and 70 millimeter lenses. So not only do they offer that widescreen look, anamorphic lenses offer an organic looking oval bokeh to the image. And of course, anamorphic lenses are known for their lens flares. And it really doesn't matter what aperture you're shooting at, the SLR Magic anamorphic lenses really produce a lot of lens flare. And so here's a quick test to show that in a low light situation. Let's talk about the fit and finish. The nice thing about them is they're the same length. It's a nice metal soft body. The aperture has the F16 on the far right, the wide open aperture on the left and gearing on both the aperture and on the focus ring. They're really nice to hold in the hand. They are substantial, they're not light. I didn't have any luck flying these lenses on a steady cam. I couldn't find a good balance because the camera is so lightweight and the lenses are so front heavy. And I would assume it would be the same with a gimbal. So these anamorphic lenses you can buy singularly or you can purchase them in a set of three and each lens comes in a pelican style case. I wish SLR Magic would have included better lens caps. These are the cheapo kind that just kind of fly off and never really clip on properly. So it's great that the lenses are the same length and that they have teeth for a follow focus along the aperture and the focus ring. However, with the focus being on the far end, how could you fit? a follow focus. I mean, certainly if you tried to attach one, you wouldn't be able to attach a matte box. They do have a threaded 82 millimeter thread on the front. I always suggest if you're going to use thread on filters to always get a size bigger than the filter thread so that you don't get any vignetting. Whether you're using your fingers to focus or a follow focus, you cannot use a clamp on matte box because there's nothing to clamp onto. You could use maybe a step up ring and then clamp onto that. But even then your matte box is going to be protruding as you focus. The lens protrudes, it extends. And so, you know, when you're using a follow focus, there's going to be some travel there. So for me, the solution was to use a rod mounted matte box. This is the Misfit Atom. Now, Bright Tangerine sells these black holes, and they're basically rubber gaskets to prevent light from hitting your lens. The one I have here is for the Viv matte box, the bigger matte box, but technically I could use it on this little Misfit Atom. 
But there's no way I can change the focus because the black hole is then covering where I would be focusing the lens. And of course, it's also covering the lens markings. So I ended up using my matte box and pushing it out just enough that when I went to focus the lens with my fingers, it wouldn't hit the glass. I mean, sometimes it did, and I would have to push the matte box out more. And believe me, it was a pain. And moreover, what I realized was, because I was shooting with the Panasonic GH5 without firmware upgrade 2.0, where they've added the de-squeeze function on the monitor, I was shooting the entire video for Buddha Box squeezed. I couldn't see proper exposure. I couldn't see proper focus. And I couldn't see proper framing. Sometimes I was capturing the reflection of the filters hitting the glass. So that's one of the major complaints I have about these lenses. I really, really wish SLR Magic would move the focus down the lens barrel so that you can have a matte box at the end of the lens. Some people may just want to use screw on filters, but for me, I like using a matte box for polarizers, for ND, and just so that I can capture the best contrast from the camera. As far as the feel of the focus and the feel of changing the aperture, it's super smooth. It has just the right amount of resistance. And overall, I mean, these lenses, they're just so much fun to use because they offer such a unique perspective on footage that just wouldn't look like this if you shot it with any other lens. Really, they have kind of a vintage vibe to me and also a kind of a cinematic quality as far as the color rendition goes. If the design quirks were ironed out, I think they would be even better lenses. And so I hope SLR Magic considers that in the future. I mean, there's a beautiful curve to the skyline at times. The oval bokeh is beautiful and unique. And then on top of it, they produce gorgeous lens flares. Now quickly, I just wanted to go through this. If you are working in post with anamorphic footage with Premiere, there is a 4x3 mode. You can just set that up. In Final Cut, what you're going to do is you are going to start a project and you're going to look at the pixel numbers of the anamorphic video. And then you are going to double the pixel width and you're going to start your project with that doubling. Then you're going to throw your anamorphic footage into your project and go under the transform panel for one of your clips and you're going to make the x axis 200%. That's it. And that will de-squeeze the image and then you just copy and paste that attribute to all your footage and you have your de-squeeze footage. Now when you output it, if you output it to to YouTube or whatever else, you're going to see it's going to output as 4K with the height of the 2.35. So that's how you do it in Final Cut Pro. There really wasn't much information about that, so I wanted to make sure that you knew how easy it was. And that is with the two times lenses. If I could sum it up, these SLR Magic anamorphic lenses offer a widescreen look for filmmakers and videographers on a budget. They produce beautiful lens flares. They are just overflowing with character. There's a few quirks to the design, the actual hardware and the design of these lenses. I really wish the focus gear wasn't at the end of the lens so that you could fit a follow focus and a matte box to the lens perfectly. Other than that, they're a great bang for the buck. The nice thing with the anamorphic lenses versus adapters is they're not complicated. You just put them on the front of your camera and you start shooting. You do want to make sure your camera has features like a de-squeeze function or your monitor does. Otherwise, you end up like me, filming based on intuition. And, uh, you know, these are great lenses. What can I say? Take care of yourself. Stay out of trouble. And I'll talk to you soon.